In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. There's a Native American proverb that I heard um, in a sermon sometime a long time ago. And it goes about a young man talking to the elder. And he tells the elder that he had, a, had an experience or a dream. And that in his, his dream that he saw two wolves. Maybe you've probably heard this in, a, in another sermon possibly. One wolf was uh, bad or evil. And he described it as being filled with envy, malice, lying, troubled, anxiety. Well, I'm going to add a few other things like anxiety, covetousness, and all manner of um, nastiness and, and grudge-bearing and unforgiveness. The other wolf was the good wolf, and the good wolf had, was um, calm, prayerful, connected, able to bear the fruit of the Spirit, to be joyful, to be kind, to lift up, uh, lift up others rather than tearing them down. And these two wolves were having a fight, he said. And then he asked his elder, which one do you think will win the fight? And the elder told him, whichever one you feed, whichever one you feed will win the fight. The Apostle Paul in today's epistle talks about how he is crucified to the world and it is no longer him living, but it is Christ living in him. We also heard that we're called to take up our crosses. And there's a similar theme to this parable that I started with, uh, connected to this idea of taking up our cross or connected to the idea of being crucified to the world. We had a baptism last Saturday, and in that baptism we prayed over the holy water that when that child went down into the water that she would die with Christ. And that when she would, came up that she would rise with Christ. That she would put off the old man that is formed after the passions and the lusts and the, the flesh and the, the, all the negative things of this world. And that she would put on the new man which was fashioned after the image of Christ filled with the Holy Spirit to guide her into all truth. And we prayed that for an infant, hoping that for the rest of her life that she would starve this old man and feed the new man with grace and with, with God's presence. So that's the beginning of the Christian life, but then throughout the Christian life, it isn't like conversion is a one-time act that sanctifies us to the end of times and, and stops our striving. But throughout our life, we're asked to constantly assess ourselves and ask ourselves, are we operating out of the old man? Are we operating in the spirit of Christ? And to begin to analyze within our life our, our motives, the reason why we do things, what we do, how we speak, how we act towards one another, and ultimately to figure out whether it is just a force of the old man with the flesh, with the sin, with the world, with the influence of the devil that operates out through us, or whether we give more attention, and whether we are operating in the new man, which brings joy, peace, and grace, comfort to other people, and this on a moment-to-moment -moment level. Now you might want to know as you find yourself operating in the old man, as you find yourself sinning, how is it that you're meant to make a transition from the old to the new? Well, only by God's help. But we'll go back to the parable and we'll say it depends on what you're feeding. If you're feeding your passions, your lusts, whether those passions be ideological, whether they be base and just simply fleshly desires and the lusts of the flesh, as Paul calls them, or whether they be of some other nature, of holding grudges, being unforgiven, 
Those are muscles we exercise. And the more that we exercise them, the stronger they get, and the more they have dominance in our life. But if we try to read the scriptures, to pray, and try to make a connection with the virtues that are outlined in the scriptures, again, love of neighbor, love of enemy, joy, peace, grace, mercy towards others, being a minister of reconciliation, if we meditate upon the scriptures, if we worship, if we pray, if we ask God for help, these are the things that feed the Holy Spirit within us, that feed the grace of God to build in our hearts. And ultimately, when Paul talks about that he is crucified to the world, he says, I only feed the grace of God in my heart. I no longer indulge myself in any other way because every time I indulge myself in the passions, it takes me away from my one goal, from the one thing that is meaningful and purposeful. It takes me away from the kingdom of heaven. And so now it is not even he that speaks anymore, but he knows because he is so close to God that when he speaks, that it is God that speaks through him that it is not him carrying out the apostolic work, but it is the Holy Spirit and Christ within him, moving out from him, because that is where his effort has been, and that is who he wants to be. I don't know about you, but as a Christian, I hope one day, in the heart, in a, in a deep way of conversion, I can say that I put more energy building up my spirit building up my life so that I could say that I was crucified fully and that so that the possibility that God may actually use me. Of course, this is the goal of the Christian life. This is the goal of what, of what everything in the gospel, it certainly is the fulfillment of that baptism that we had just a week ago. So this battle, and I forgot to mention this in the parable, but this battle rages on within each of us. Do you want to, in the next few months, which are very anxious months for our society, do you want to be given over to anxiety, anger, rage, the movement of ideology? Do you want the news to be your Pied Piper? that leads you here to and fro and blows you around like the wind? Or would you rather find peace, rest, grace, strength, and comfort in the Holy Spirit and be blown by the wind of God, to be pushed and moved by the Spirit of God? Well, the answer is the same as that parable. We need to feed ourselves and we feed ourselves, we read the scriptures, we pray, we come to church, we meditate on holy things, we ask for the intercessions of the saints, and ultimately, we ask God to help us to make the kingdom of heaven first in our life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst.